So I woke up in Stuttgart with this wonderful view of the train line and car park. I'm not saying that sarcastically, I generally like to look at trains. We had a quiet day today in Stuttgart, not many things get done, actually three things that we wanted to do. So we headed to the U-Bahn stop, which is overground, because logic, yo. And we so we then headed to Nectar Park, which is another byword for Mercedes Island, as everything on this island is Mercedes. You got the fa factory, headquarters, museum, stadium, that's, that's all Mercedes. The only thing not Mercedes is the Porsche Arena, which somehow snuck in there. So we had to find this museum. Museum is about a five minute walk from the train station. So not the worst thing and also gave a chance to just look around various workshops and buildings and factories owned by Mercedes until we then come to the museum with a roundabout with a big spike in the middle. The roundabout does not have a three point star on it, which I think is a missed opportunity there from Mercedes. But outside the factory there is a statue to Fangio, which is a nice tribute to him. We then went inside the museum, which I have to say it is one of the best museums I've ever been to. It's actually brilliant. <laughs> like, I'm one of them, I'm a Mercedes fan. Like, I respect them, and I think they will generally make decent cars. Uh, just not my thing. But the museum is excellent. Brilliant. It shows, tells the story of you know how Mercedes came about from sort of Literally the beginning of the automobile to the present day and all the various things they've done in the meantime. You know, all, all the crazy things that Daner tried to, to shove petrol engines into in the early days to, you know, to, they, the, the way they put, they built buses, they built airplanes, they built cars, they built everything. You know, it's shown off you know, many cars, many significant, many unusual, uh, and many is, historic as well, you know, they had race cars that, you know, you know, the legends have been wrote about. You know, you know I love, obviously, I, you know, me loving racing, I loved their, their infamous sort of walk of champions that they have with their his successful and historic race cars. Oh, that's just brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah, overall, it's a, probably one of the best car museums in the world. And even if you, even if you, not really a Mercedes fan, you will probably love this museum. Just from a car point of view, it's just brilliant. And it's almost as if they leave nearly leave the craziest thing to last, with their, <laughs> with the last thing in the museum being the land record cars, including a car that travelled at four hundred and thirty-two kilometers an hour, on a public road. Yeah, that's that. That's crazy stuff. Madness. Also in the museum, we get this poor shot, admittedly, this is honestly the best one I could get that I could be arsed to take a picture of, of the Mercedes Arena, which is the home of FC Stuttgart. Fun fact about FC Stuttgart and me, for some reason I have a jersey from in one of their jerseys that is signed by a Stuttgart player. No idea who the player is, no idea exactly what the year even the jersey was, but I have it, for some reason. Yeah. Random connections. So, leaving the museum, we then took the S band and Transgender band to uh, the city centre, unintentionally, because I got lost. We got to see the cathedral, as well as, random fact about Stuttgart, they were the first German city to have a telecom tower, which now most German cities have. We did this all to find this, which doesn't look like much, but it's a funicular railway. A railway that has a gear in the middle to stop it falling down the hill so we can go up the steep hills because Stuttgart is actually you know the, the city is within a valley so has these I think it's got two funic funicular railways that form part of the normal public transport system so you can you know it's not really a tourist thing it's just every day but I took it as a tourist thing because it's unusual yeah, and by going up the sides of the city, we then get a a whole nice view of the place. This was actually the only city I actually went to in Germany that wasn't just on a flat plain, which was interesting enough to me. Yeah, a bit of variety. So we reached the top, 
and got a U-band to bring us back to the center. Got lost to get on the U-band because it's horribly laid out. But that was a fight for another day. This is truly the worst U-band I've ever been on. But we got over that to get to Porch Flats. Up in the north of the city, a little bit outside in some sort of town. But this is where Porsche sort of came to being as currently the home of their 9-11 factory. And the Porsche Museum, which I then went around. Similar idea to the Mercedes Museum, sort of taking it from the beginning and bring it to the present day, going through significant cars that Porsche made, including this Beetle and various, you know, sports cars, actual race cars and road cars, as well as other random things they've done uh, throughout the, the years. This museum was a bit smaller than the Mercedes Museum, and I think it had audio guides. For some reason, I didn't get an audio guide to cite that down, but no, still a, still a good, good museum. A lot of historic cars again, which it sort of ticks off your all your boxes between the Mercedes Museum and the Porsche Museum of all his cars I need to see. Also worth pointing out, and make note if you're ever going to visit both of them, is that if you present a ticket from one museum in the other museum, you get 25% off. So do that, and realise that before you buy a ticket. Don't buy your ticket, and then realise it afterwards. Now with that, I had actually done really what I wanted to do in Stuttgart, so brief look around at the Porsche Platz and all the Porsche stuff, with the factory and the roundabout with 911s in it. So, then went across to you know, have a look at the showroom, but yeah, that was Stuttgart done, really. So, headed back to the train station, being via the long way out, as you would. Uh, but yeah, even though I did much less in Stuttgart, say, compared to other cities, it still took me all day do just by the nature of what I was doing uh, so then I headed to the north of Stuttgart where I got this plate of schnitzel which was actually one of my best meals uh, on this whole trip got in this crappy little kebab place in, a, in an underpass in a train station lovely stuff uh, the chili was extremely spicy the cocktail was good the chips were freezer just they're just freezer chips that got thrown into a into a deep fat fryer, as was the schnitzel, which meant it was done properly. And all then eaten in this crummy little pub, uh, where I found that in Germany you can still smoke in bars. Which, uh, judging by how loose their other tobacco laws are in advertising, I'm guessing that might actually be legal, and not just this pub deciding that... Well, no one's ever going to look in this dark CD place, so they can just do what they want. So from there I then got onto a, a bus to Frankfurt. Obviously being a bus, this was going to take ages. Fortunately though, the Wi-Fi actually worked. I mean, it's the first public transport in Germany where the Wi-Fi did work. Which is a nice thing about this bus. Uh, it's our knees that the Wi-Fi work, because that's how these Flix buses work. Uh, if you wanted travel around Germany on the cheap I would definitely recommend them considering I got this journey for 790 which is way cheaper than the train anyway even like the cheapest train is about nearly 20 euros so there you go it was a nice journey uh, the only not nice thing was the traffic jam though it seems the actual timetable already takes the traffic jam into account which is nice but I was that and Finally, before we got to Frankfurt in Darmstadt, it turns out the bus passes the ESA. I think it could be like headquarters or building or something. I'm not sure exactly what ESA have in Darmstadt, but that was nice to see. So, that leads us to the next day in Frankfurt.